I'm hearing you speak almost as if the match is over, but there's a big, big game tomorrow. Are you going to be cautious tomorrow, or are we going to be looking to win with the Black Beasts? It's not tied this match up. I'll try to make this move. <laughs> After game two, you know, all these thoughts, they were, uh, you know, propelling into my mind. And uh, I have to admit that it definitely, you know, uh, contributed to, to, to final demise because What's happened in the game six? It's, I mean, there was no game. I mean, I just, I, I didn't want to play. I, just, I didn't want to face these guys, you know. I didn't, I, I, I didn't care. I don't want to say, okay, if I just play for a draw, if I try to make a draw and uh, we end up 3-3, three, three, I have to shake their hands, you know, I have just to smile. And that's, I don't, I, it's, I wanted to get it, to get it, you know, off my back. We felt that we had broken him. We really did. Um, and in fact, before the game, we had discussions you know, and I said something like, look, you know, this guy, he's, he's, he's shot, he's broken down. I don't think he can play much of a game today. I couldn't play when I just felt that we, we, we were dead meat. So it's a, to be like a sitting duck here. until he made the critical mistake. And there's a lot of speculation on whether he'd planned this, what he'd overlooked, when he overlooked something. And I think you can, you can tell exactly what happened because there's a, there's a time frame running with it. You can see how many seconds he spent on each move and you can see exactly at which point he realized, I'm gonna lose this game. His head sinks into his body and you can see he has given up. He's going to lose this game. He lost in a very human way. In that final game, he collapsed psychologically from the pressure and he just played something miserable, his preparation was terrible. It was kind of like a, you know, someone coming up and trying to bat, holding the wrong end of the bat. It was almost that bad. It was just the most miserable loss. Call it a it blow crazy. against humanity. After six games over nine days, Deep Blue, the IBM computer, beat Garry Kasparov, 
considered to be the best chess player in the history of the game. And whoa, deep blue Kasparov. The great Russian champion was not a graceful loser. Remember one thing, Deep Blue didn't win this match. Gary Kasparov lost it. In the very last game, he just gave it to them. He, they didn't win. The match, that last game was won by Deep Blue before it had started to calculate a single move. It was still playing out of its openings book and it was over already. So something terrible had happened to Gary, Gary Kasparov, one of the bravest and most courageous players on the planet, someone with the best nerves, this man just breaks down like a child in the last game. Something terrible had happened. Yeah, I remember I had a chair over there in this small section, you know, corner section. And, uh, and when game six was over, I was sitting there, you know, uh, uh, not in a very good mood. And, and my mother came to me and she said, Gary, no matter what you think, you had no choice but to go upstairs and to, to face the press. Go and do it. Be a man. OK, so I'm a professional. The match was lost by the world champion. But uh, I think there are very good and very profound reasons for such a result. I think the competition just started. <laughs> I made one big mistake before this match. It was nothing to do about uh, further investigation of uh, computer potential chess. There was one zeal to beat Gary Kasparov. And uh, when a big corporation with unlimited resources would like to do so, there are many ways to achieve the result. The IBM PR people told us that we should not smile. The joy was really sucked out of it. It's like we had won, but you know, we weren't jumping up and down. To get to our seats, we had to walk past Gary's mother. And G Gary's mother just like, like clapped, gave a sarcastic clap right in, in our faces, almost hit me in the nose. You know, like, you know, congratulations, you know, you got, you got what you wanted. You're really proud of yourselves. Like, you know, all, all, we, all we did is program a chess computer, you know? And it's, it was at a point that we should be most happy, but we weren't. And it sucks, um, but that's, that's past, it's past. It, it, it was a shock because I never lost a match before. Uh, I could always recover. And, uh, and even with all the unfortunate set of circumstances in New York in 97, I believe that under different conditions, so just it's, uh, uh, I, could, uh, I could do it. These are also things that he has to tell himself in order to come back and play another game. Because you can't go or walk around thinking, hmm, yep, that thing's better than me, and still get back in the ring. You have to come up with a way to justify, or at least to build on it, because that's how you kind of keep your, your composure and keep your, that's, that strong ego that you have together, I'll get it next time. Kasparov says he was at a disadvantage because he played an emotional game against an object without emotions. Another showdown is expected. Until then, the $700,000 first prize can keep Deep Blue charged for the rematch.